we're more concerned about team speed because they run so well. Uh, there's not a player on the field for Clemson University that can't run and hit. That speed has been shown by a stable of tailbacks led by sophomore Terrence Flagler. Flagler is averaging eight yards per carry this year and already has scored four touchdowns. Quarterback Mike Epley, despite coming off a forgettable performance against Georgia last week, has been the driving force to Clemson's explosive offense that has scored 39 points per game. Epley connects with all ACC tight end KD Dunn. Dunn now has nine career touchdown receptions. Clemson's versatile offense comes up against a swarming Yellow Jacket defense. They lead the nation in total in scoring defense. A key to their success, outside linebacker Pat Swilling. They call him strike, and he appropriately leads the Yellow Jackets in hits. Number 99 here against the University of Alabama. Today, from Grant Field in Atlanta, Georgia, it's the Tigers of Clemson versus the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. in Atlanta, Georgia, a rather cool afternoon for football as the Clemson Tigers get ready to take on the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. Hello, everybody. I'm Art Ekman, and working with me, Kim McWilkin. You know, the Georgia Tech Bill Curry era has seen isolated moments of glories, but never a big game like this one. Well, in the last 14 years, Georgia Tech has not been in a game where both teams are ranked in the top 20. This will be their first one in a long time. Clemson, on the other hand, has been in a lot of big games, and that's got to be an advantage for them. It's going to be a game of interesting matchups, I think, especially when you consider that Georgia Tech has had such a stingy defense this year and the explosive offense of Clemson. Georgia Tech's ranked number one in scoring defense in the nation. Clemson's got an offense ranked number six. You're right, there are a lot of individual matchups. The one I like is Tech center, John Davis, who's 6'4", 290 pounds, against the All-American from Clemson, William the Refrigerator Perry, who tilts in at 320 pounds. Tech's got a huge offensive line. There's no question about that. They have like five guys that are 280 or over. They're awesome, but I think the deciding factor in this game is going to be Georgia Tech's ability to combat Clemson's overall team speed. Okay, the teams are on the field right now. Getting set, we'll be right back with the kickoff of today's game after this. Danny Ford on the sideline. 47 wins, 11 losses, 2 ties. And Danny Ford trying to rally his troops back after the loss from the University of Georgia at Athens in last week's play. Coach Bill Curry's in his fifth season at Georgia Tech. He approaches today's game rather cautiously, but optimistically. 49 returning lettermen, 17 returning starters. Has given him lots of optimism. And also the team's 2-0 record. Donald Igboy Buike will be kicking off from the 40-yard line as Tech won the toss elected to receive. Gary Lee is deep at the goal line. Lee, six feet tall, 188 pounds, sophomore. He's out of the 16 yard line. Anthony Johnson, number 23, making the stop for Clemson. So Tech takes over, first and 10 from just shy of the 16 yard line. The offensive line is big and quick, anchored by John Davis. Coaches believe he might be the best lineman ever when he gets through here at Tech. Newberry quarterback, Clampton pullback, Lavette the record-breaking tailback, number 20. Clampton, the pullback, big hole! Davis, facing to the bound on the 35, along with Reggie Pleasant. He's a good, quick-hitting pullback, and an outstanding blocker. You're going to see the whole, the entire Clemson defense concentrate on Robert Lavette. Look at the... The pursuit to the outside, Tech gives the ball to Glanton right up the middle with nobody on him. A terrific block by senior Peter Blazik. Two-year letterman from Hickson, Texas, 6'6", 287 pounds at the right tackle spot. 
Wisdom Hunt, the tight end, goes to the far side. First and 10 now from the 43-yard line of Clemson. Left side jumping off. LeVette with the ball. The whistles blow. Ivermeyer. It looks like the junior from Lakemont, Georgia, jumping off the line. Illegal procedure against Tech. That would make it a first and 15 for the Yellow Jackets. On the defensive line, Wells, Berlin, Perry, Perry, and Terman Smack, the Bandit. The linebackers, Walls and Milton, two experienced linebackers, and there's the defensive secondary. Danforth is really the hot one in that defensive secondary. First and 15 from the 48 now for the Yellow Jackets. Dewberry at quarterback. Dropping back, swings it to LaVette. LaVette with good blocking. A nice cutback. Off the block of John Davis, number 65. And Ronald Watson finally makes the stop. This is a slip screen. Dewberry drops back. Does not even let the defense comes in. He unloads the ball immediately to LaVette. LaVette had three of his offensive linemen out there in front of him. Did a nice job cutting back, keeping his balance. Watson finally coming up, making the stop. That was John Davis, that big center out there in front of him. Second down and two from the 35. A good example of why LeVette is currently ranked fourth in the nation in all-purpose running. Dewberry. Inside the 30, first down, Georgia Tech. Summit Smack, number 12, making the stop now for the Tigers as Dewberry gets the first down. That play was not too dissimilar from a play he had last year and rambled more than 60 yards for a touchdown. That's right, the longest gain against Clemson last year in one carry. This was a quarterback draw all the way. He had no intention of passing the ball, just tucked it under, went straight up the middle. That was a broken play at that time as Dewberry took over for an injured quarterback, Stu Rogers, in the Clemson game. From the 28-yard line to the first down. Mixed up in the backfield, LeVette gets the carry, and Perry, William Perry, number 66, nails him behind the line. Well, you can't give William Perry that much time and that much mix-up. Mike Harrington running into the play from the flanker spot. Georgia Tech, you notice, leads the series, but the series was discontinued in 1977, and Clemson's football program certainly excelled during that period of time. Coach Danny Ford looking on as Wizzing Hunt, the tight end, goes to the right side. Second down and 12 from the 30 for the Yellow Jackets. Dewberry back to throw once again. Wizzing Hunt down the middle is covered. Perry, the big rush, coming back to the ball. is Wise, and he misses it, going through the hand. Darrell Wise, who's a speedster, a big play man from Vidalia, Georgia, a 6'2 junior. Good pressure that time by the linebacker, Henry Wall. Well, John Dewberry's going to have to scramble out of the pocket. There's Walls in on him. Dewberry trying to buy some time, make something happen. He wanted to go to Wisenhunt down the middle, but he spots Daryl Wise at the last minute. The throw's a little high. Wise had a chance for it. Incomplete. They've got a third and 12 here. Big play early in this game. Still from the 30-yard line. Norton is to the near side. Dewberry going straight back. Going for Norton. And the smallest man of the Yellow Jacket team hauls it in after a great hit by Reggie Fletcher and Ronald Watson. Norton's only 5'9", 152. Well, Dewberry straight back in the pocket. Clemson playing a zone. Norton finds the seam in the zone. It's a big reception and a big throw for Tech early in this game. First down at the 12-yard line for the Yellow Jacket. Dewberry now, two out of three for 30 yards in the first drive. Wise in motion. That's uh, the fullback left. And the fire plug moves it down to the eight-yard line before number 76, Steve Berlin, makes the tackle. Left came into the game with a 3.9 average in 25 carries, 98 yards, one touchdown, his longest was 12. Well, he certainly erased that in the first carry of the ball game, and now has two carries for 45. Well, I'm sure Coach Bill Curry was thinking that Clemson would be psyched up for Robert Levent, and he's been giving the ball effectively to Clinton up the middle. Second down and six from the eight-yard line for the Yellow Jackets. Levent. Good reaction. 
by the linebacker core and Jeff Wells. Wells and Walls combining for the tackle on Robert Levette. Clemson's got such great team speed on defense, Art, that I'm sure with a back like Levette, they sometimes will have a tendency to overrun the play. That's what they did initially on the first play of the game when Clanton went right up the middle with everybody on the Clemson side chasing Levette. Levette, in less than a half of football last week against the Citadel, had 158 yards. Third and four for Georgia Tech. What a nice defensive move that time by Michael Perry and along with the Donald Richardson. Richard Donaldson, number 20. Combining with that young man, a freshman Michael Perry from Aiken, South Carolina. And Michael Perry being William's little brother, right, Art? Only 275 pounds. That'll bring on the place kicking team for the Yellow Jackets now with 10 minutes and 46 seconds remaining to go here in the first quarter. David Bell. He's five out of six. His long is the 46 yarder. Ball placement now on the 15, or just shy of the 15. Ken Wisinghun, the tight end, is the holder. It is up, and it is good. So one of the big question marks for Georgia Tech coming into this season was their kicking game, and it's been Bell who has excelled against Alabama, the Citadel, and now puts the Yellow Jackets on the scoreboard. With 10-31 remaining in the first quarter, Georgia Tech three, Clemson nothing. Epley, the quick look see to Butler. Butler forced out of bounds at the 38-yard line by Reginald Rutland. Well, Epley does a nice job of recognizing the coverage at the line of scrimmage. Tech had rotated up both of their cornerbacks with the two safeties deep, and Epley's going to lay the ball past the first quarterback right in that seam to Butler. A nice first down play. Butler, who comes into the game with four catches for 51 yards, already has two straight in this drive. Epley two for two through the air, 31 yards. Williams and Rulak, the wide outs this time. Katie Dunn is in a slot. As the handoff goes, the driver, big hole as he moves inside the 30 to the 27. Rutland finally secured him at that point. Rutland is a very strong, very quick cornerback who has 4-4, four, 4-5 four, four, speed. Learned the hard way, getting burned as a freshman several times last year. And if Stacy Driver hadn't have slipped at that point, Jim, Rutland might have had a tough time with it. Well, it was a nice block thrown there by the right guard, Andy Cheatham, that time. Close to the first down. Driver, two carries for 11 yards, just short of the first down for Clemson. It's really interesting to see the Clemson offense operate because... Last week in the second half, they were essentially shut down by the Georgia defense. They're up against one of the better defenses in the country this afternoon, and so far on this drive, they're moving the ball well. Driver leading the team with 188 yards on 36 carries coming into the ball game. And he's a plug runner, hits the hole fast. His longest gain, a 19-yard gain, and averaging 5.2, that's consistency. Second and one at the 28-yard line for the Tigers now, trailing three to nothing. First quarter action. Driver once again, Willing hits him up high and pushes him back. Pat Swilling, the best up front pass rusher, this time called upon to stop the run up the middle. Well, that time Clemson made no bones about going for the first down. They brought two tight ends into the game. They only had one wide out with the I formation over left tackle. Got enough for the first down. Ray Williams and Rulak to the far side. Flowers the fullback, the up man in that I formation. First and 10 at the 25-yard line for the Tigers. Epley on the roll. Nice protection this time. Gets it away to his fullback, and Flowers moves it close to the first down stick at the 18-yard line. Mike Travis from Marietta, Georgia, making the tackle. Cheatham, you'll see him on the far side giving wonderful protection to Epley on this roll. And you can see how smooth Mike Epley is back there. That was a fine play fake to his right. He comes back on the bootleg to his left, unloads the ball quickly, and that's a nice first down. When you come up second and two, Art, you're always in good shape offensively. Epley back on target this week, three for three for 38 yards in the first Tiger drive, second and three. Driver does not get the first down. Good defensive play that time. Dante Jones, the outside linebacker, 
They call him Sweet D. He gets his 13th tackle of the year. Well, Tech gambled on defense that play. They had an odd man defensive front in there. They blitzed both outside linebackers, congesting up the middle and stopped the play. Clemson's in a situation now with a third and three. This is a great place to have a quarterback like Epley because he does so many things well. The runner pass there, both the possibility. From the 19-yard line, that's going to hurt. Reed Ingles jumps the gun. The 6'6", 270-pound senior took a pretty good lick after that, too. Well, Reed's a senior, and you don't like to see a senior make this kind of mistake. Epley didn't even have his hands in under the center, and Reed takes off, but he got a good lick in, didn't he? If you're going to make a mistake, make it 100%. So this might change the play on a third and nine from the 24. Richard Butler and Terrence Rulak, the wide outs coming to the near side. Flowers, the fullback with driver at the tailback spot. Epley looking for his receivers now. Rulak got the first down depending on where they place the football. Cleve Pounds bouncing him out of bounds, but I believe he got enough for the first down at the 15-yard line. It's the same sprint out that we saw earlier, both Flowers and Driver out front throwing blocks. Butler went down and hooked it up. Rulak just did a short out to his outside, and Epley put, him on, put the ball right on the numbers. Epley's now four for four, 47 yards. Not a bad start. Rulak catching his eighth pass of the year. First and ten at the 15-yard line. KD Dunn once again is in the slot. Oh, what a hit that time. Jimmy Anderson from the inside linebacker spot. He's from Lexington, Kentucky. He looked like he had a running start from Lexington that time. Well, Anderson is shooting the gap on this play. There you see Flowers blocking up the middle. But look at Anderson come in from the outside. Great hit, putting his helmet right on the football. That's the way the coaches like to see it done. Driver now in five carries, 15 yards. Gives the Tigers a second and nine. Epley making sure everybody hears the count. Up the middle, the fullback. That's Flowers, Teddy Flowers. Lots of RPMs on those legs before he went down. Well, here we're isoing on Ken Swilly, the outside linebacker of Tech, their best tackler, but look at Flowers with the leg drive straight up the middle, breaking the tackle. KD Dunn out there in front of him, throwing a block. Swilly was actually doing what he was supposed to do, and that was cover the, the uh, option, action between the quarterback and the trail man. Third and one on the five. And Epley with the sneak, looking for that first down. I'm sure he got it. He made it over the five-yard line, so it'll be first and goal for Clemson with 4.54 remaining in the first quarter. They trail three to nothing. Tech on their first drive, getting the field goal. And now the Tigers looking for more. Epley completing 54.2% of his passes this year. On a first and five. Hands off the driver. And driver's met high by Ken Piker, the defensive end. Fumble. Cleve Pounds comes up for the football. And coming out of the ball game is Piker with a short shoulder. Well, Ken Parker's the man that made the hit on this play. Watch Parker. Number 84 right there. What a great hit at the line of scrimmage. Caused the ball to come loose. Parker, it appears, hurt his shoulder on the play. And Pounds pounces on the football. He was switched from a running back position. In fact, two years ago, he led the ACC in punt return. So a great break for the Yellow Jackets here in the first quarter as Clemson was knocking on the door. First and ten just out outside their own five-yard line. Wise foot for the far side as Dewberry calls him in motion. And Blanton, the fullback. He's been an effective ball carrier in this ball game in a short period of time, making his way over the 10-yard line before being first covered by Steve Berlin. Well, 
every time Robert Levette lines up in the eye and sprints to the outside, you can see the Clemson defense react to him. Tech has effectively been giving the ball up the middle to Clanton, and he's been getting good yardage. Keith Clanton's the senior out of Villa Rica, Georgia, just south of Atlanta. He's known as a good blocker, not a powerful runner, but quick. And that's what makes him so effective on those quick openers up the middle. He's got 50 yards and only three carries so far. Second and five, Robert Levesque. Penalty flag is down as Levesque is brought down behind the line of scrimmage. Nice reaction by Ronald Watson from the backfield and William Perry putting a good pressure up that front. Well, even though William Perry's 320 pounds, he's known for his quickness. On this particular play, he was a little too quick, lining up over John Davis, the big center for Tech. He wanted to get a jump on him, but I think he was a little quick here. We'll see it. Number 66 needing only one quarterback sack to break the Clemson record. Look at the quickness for that big man, but just a little too early that time, and Clemson's guilty of being offside. Incidentally, that record is held by a San Francisco 49er, Jim Stuckey, for quarterback sacks that Perry's going after. So that's the second penalty here in the first quarter against Clemson with 335 still remaining. Danny Ford looking on. He spends as much time on his haunches as a baseball catcher, probably more. Georgia Tech now with a first and ten at the 16. Two tight ends. Lovett the carrier. Clanton, a nice block on the corner as Lovett goes to the 22-yard line. Reggie Pleasant meets him there. There was speculation coming into this game that Georgia Tech may have to throw the ball a little bit more than they have in their first two games. They mixed the plays well effectively in the first drive. On this drive, it's been all on the ground so far. There you see a good block on the corner. That was by Keith Clanton, the fullback. Good pursuit, though, by the Clemson secondary. Checking out William Perry up front in that great battle with the center, Davis. Well, John Davis has Perry in control there. He's got to make sure he keeps that left hand in. Watch the holding. Davis, 292. Here's a second and four for Tech. Dewberry going long to Wise. He's a sprinter. He's got it at the 30-yard line. Ronald Watson catching up for Daryl Wise. Daryl Wise, we said earlier, is a big play receiver. He's used to 30 yards per catch. In fact, when Tony McKay was hurt on the track team, he came in a substitute, and they set a new ACC record in the 1,600-meter relay, and he was a part of that relay team. Well, you've got to like the call because it's second and four back in your own territory. That's normally a rundown. John Dewberry comes with a play-action pass, and he puts the ball right on the money. 47 yards on the reception. Dewberry now, 78 yards on the day through the air. Here's Robert Lovett. Oh, what a shifty runner. Loses the ball, but it's out of bounds. On a first and 10 from the 31, Terrence Mack finally gets a hold of Lovett. Well, Robert Lovett appears to be almost gliding on ice as he makes these cuts. The ball comes free, but out of bounds. Good first down play by Tech. They've got a second and one. And Art, I really like that play call on second down, the play before where they came with the bomb. Showed a lot of imagination by Bill Curry. From the 22, second and one for the Yellow Jackets with 2.16 on the clock here in the first quarter. Darrell Norton goes in motion and off to the fullback. Lanton gets inside the 20. He's got the first down where William Perry puts the grasp on him. Perry leads the team with 28 tackles coming into the game. Let's check it out. Here's the matchup. Perry, see how quick he is off the ball. His move almost took himself out of the play that time, but you really have to respect the quickness of the man. Well, he was not only quick in getting to the left side around Davis, the center, but also readjusting to come back around to make the tackle. Big number 66, first and 10 ball for the Yellow Jackets at the 20-yard line. Dewberry to Glanton. Glanton can't get by the linebacker walls this time. That was the big difference in the play. Nice opening initially at the line of scrimmage, Jim. Well, Georgia Tech has come into this game offensively with a very sound game plan. They're using Lavette, but they're using him sparingly. They're going to Glanton. They're taking their shots on the pass. There you see a double team on William Perry. That's the reason for the running room there. Second and six from the 16 now. 
Johnson with 56 yards. The pitch goes back to LeVette. LeVette nicely covered that time by the Tiger defense. Henry Walls will get credit with the hit. Eldridge Milton coming up, helping out on the play on the second and four. LeVette has been held at 16 yards on the slants to the outside. You know, the nice thing about LeVette, Art, he always looks like he's in control. Even when he's at full speed, he seems able to be, make the cuts uh, in any direction that he wants to go. LeVette currently holding 15 school records. Third and four for Georgia Tech now at the 14. Perry almost jumping off. It'll look like he got back in time. Drew Berry to Wizard Hunt. Out of bounds. Wisenhut is an interesting case in that he has played four positions, started at four different positions for Georgia Tech throughout his career, and has a chance to become the first five-year letterman in the school's history. And keeping in line with the big people that Tech has in the offensive line, Wisenhut's a big tight end. He's 6'3", 230. He was open that time, play action pass. He ran a little out. Dewberry just overthrew him. Wisinghut, you see, will be holding as he played quarterback his freshman year. Played split end, linebacker, now tied in. The snapper is John Davis. Bell attempting the field goal from the 21. So the 31-yard attempt is up. It looks true. It's good. Georgia Tech now with 28 to go here with the first quarter. Leads Clemson 6 to nothing. David Bell, 2 for 2. As he puts another one up through the upright, Bell was really the surprise of the fall practice because there was a big match-off for the kicking, uh, place-kicking job for the uh, Yellow Jackets after the graduation of Ron Wright. But he was the big difference in the Alabama game. He actually practiced in the offseason at the University of Georgia. He lives in Athens, Georgia. I doubt that they'll be letting him practice there next year. His 31-yarder capping that drive, and he puts another swift kick down. Williams to the 22, 23, and almost the 24-yard line. Number 45, Ray Williams returns the kick. Lilly making the tackle on Williams. And the Tigers will take over as ball placement on the 24, first and 10. 22 tickers left here in the first quarter. Danny Ford conferring with his assistant coaches. Trailing 6 to nothing. Running backs the same. Flowers at fullback. Stacy Driver at tailback. He's got the ball. Driver slipping on that artificial turf. He had some running room, but he makes it on a nice gain to the 32-yard line. A couple of yards short of the first down. Driver that time out of the eye, running straight ahead, just man-on-man -man blocking that time at the line of scrimmage. Good surge by the Clemson offensive line. That is the end of the first quarter. With the score, Georgia Tech 6, Clemson nothing. We'll be back with more election from Atlanta, Georgia after this. From the 41-yard line. Driver now with 30 yards, as you see there. KD Dunn in motion, driver the football. Swims his way, the one yard shy of the first down. That's Flowers. Mark Pike, got him just before the first down marker. Hey, you're gonna see Epley just opening up, giving the ball to his fullback. A lot of tech people there, but he's down, he's got the ball down to a third and one. Quick comes in at fullback, and they're going to have to call a timeout. There's a mix-up in the lineup. Let's pause now for a word from your local station. This is the Raycom Sports Network. Third down and one at the 45. Two tight ends. Riggs and KD Dunn in the lineup. That's quick in motion. He's a blocking fullback, and Stacy Driver close to the first down. Looks like he might have made it. Number 21, Stacy Driver, the ball carrier. Swelling is on the bottom of the pile, along with Ivory Lee, who's back in at a nose guard. First quarter stat, Georgia Tech, 80 rushing yards against Clemson, and 78 through the air, 158 yards in the first quarter against that Clemson defense. Final possession, 8 minutes and 32 seconds.
very impressive for the Yellow Jackets. First and ten at the 47-yard line now for the Tigers. Epley on the option. That's Stacy Driver. Nice spin move. Getting out of the grass for one tackler. Moving inside the 45. I think they'll put it down with a knee touch right before the 45. He spun away from Ralph Malone from Madison, Alabama. A two-year junior. Well, here's Epley on the option. Coming down the line. KD Dunn lined up in the slot. There you see him making a block on number five, Jones of Georgia Tech. That really allowed Driver to get downfield that time up after the pitch. Stacy is averaging four yards a carry against the Yellow Jacket defense. Number one in scoring defense, number one in total defense in the nation coming into this game, second and three at the 46. Driver and a good hit that time by Ted Roof. Ted Roof has 14 tackles coming into this ball gag. And he's kind of a throwback to the old timer there, the Ray Nitsky type of hitter. Well, you're going to see Roof make the play like coaches like linebackers to make the play. Sifting through the block, coming up, making the tackle. He had his shoulder square to the line of scrimmage that time, and that's the way they like to make, make those plays. Injured his shoulder last year on a ter terrific hit, but he's the type of linebacker that coaches also like because there's very little wasted motion. Very good at the read. Third down and three. Key play now. Let's see if Spencer was drawn offside for an illegal procedure call, or he jumped off. Illegal procedure, Clemson. Boy, that's a tough penalty. At the 46-yard line on a third and three, now make it a third and eight. Well, in a tight game like this, the team that keeps it poised is going to be the winner. Someone in that offensive line, there it is, the left guard, Steve Reese. Came out of his stance. Spencer saw it, came across the line of scrimmage. That's five against Clemson, and now it's a much tougher call when you're back there at third and eight, Art. Clemson's been penalized 15 yards in this game, but that might have been the uh, most important one on the third and three. Now it's third and eight, as we mentioned. Epley looking for Dunn. Yep. By number 94, Glenn Spencer. He's only 6'4", with a great leap from Douglasville, Georgia. Well, Epley wants to go to KD Dunn all the way here. Dunn's down the middle. The free safety, Anthony Harrison, had picked up Dunn man-to-man. -man. Epley's got the time, but look at the ball batted away. KD Dunn was open. Spencer didn't even make any contact at all with the blocker. Just looked for the drift. Hatcher with the punt underway. Daryl Norton is back ready to receive the punt as it floats for the end zone. Look at the reverse bounce. But they'll put it back to the 20-yard line. So with the Dale Hatcher punt, Georgia Tech takes over at their 20. With the score, Georgia Tech 6, punts and nothing. We'll be back with more action in a moment. Third and one for the Yellow Jackets at the 47-yard line. The fullback, Lampy. Looks like he might have picked up the needed yardage as William Perry will get credit for the tackle. Wilkins, you see him there, number 80, one of the finest blockers on this team. In fact, most people think he is the finest blocker on this Yellow Jacket team, with only Glanton, the fullback, number two right behind him in that category. First down for Georgia Tech with nine minutes and seven seconds remaining here in the second quarter. Coach Bill Curry, very nervous about this big game, said he couldn't sleep. It took him back to playing years. He said, I think my body is getting ready to play, and I just can't sleep. My assistant coaches are making fun of me this week. Tech, though, has proved they can move the ball on Clemson. Another naked move. Look That's out. right. There he is. Wilkins. Gary Wilkins down to the three-yard line. Richard Donaldson finally picking him up. So far this afternoon, Georgia Tech's play calling has been perfect. A new twist to an old thing, Kim McCorkin. Well, they came out earlier with the bootleg. Dewberry all by himself. He's going to come out here all by himself once again. But this time, he's got the runner pass option. And Wilkins' release went straight down the middle of the football field. Richard Donaldson chasing him. But a big play for Georgia Tech down there inside the five-yard line. Nice catch for a guy with a broken right hand. He broke it against the University of Alabama. First down at the three-yard line. Lovett does not get in. Tyrone Davis made sure of that. 
Robert Lovett, what a great scorer he's been for Georgia Tech throughout his career. Check it again. Well, here you see this desire by Lovett. He was actually hit in the backfield. Three Clemson defenders on him, but he's falling forward at the goal line. And they've got one yard to go. We might see something right over the top here from Robert Lovett. Six in the nation in scoring. Second down at the one-yard line. They go to the fullback, Clinton, touchdown! So the bread and butter man for the Yellow Jackets in this ball game against Clemson takes it in. Well, it's happened already so many times in this game. They give it to Clinton, the fullback, and he goes right up the middle and got the score. Here's another look at it. Just good blocking up front on that right side. Tony Capano, the right guard, blocking on William Perry that time. Got Tech into the end zone. Lance's second touchdown of the year. They're going to go for the two points after getting two field goals earlier. Lance and Lovett, the running back. And we go with Dewberry looking out for Wisenhut. He got it. The two points. Wisenhut, the tight end, cutting over the middle. Wisenhut, we mentioned earlier, has a chance of becoming the first five-year letterman in football for Jack. We'll explain it after this replay, Kim. Well, here comes Seabury out on the rollout. He took a look at Gary Wilkins, number 80. The whole Clemson defense collapsed on Wilkins, and that left Wisenhut wide open in the middle. With the score, Georgia Tech 14, Clemson nothing. We'll pause now for a look at the local station. Number four is ready to kick off. Romanus, a nice high over end, returnable to Rulak. No Williams, it bounces in the end zone and he won't bring it out. All right, you've got to hand it to Bill Curry. So far in this game, the play calling, the game plan of Georgia Tech has been flawless. They've executed it to perfection. Their quarterback, not known for his passing so far in this game, is 5 of 8 for 130 yards against the number one ranked passing defense in the country. I was mentioning that Wisenhut is a five-year senior. In 1980, there was a rule where you could not redshirt freshmen, but the NCAA said that uh, number nine would have an extra year as all freshmen that year would, who played less than four games. They thought it was unfair because they came right back the next year to allow the red shirt in. Weiger takes the pass and is stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Well, it's certainly Tech is glad that Wizard Hunt got that extra year. The one yard punt caps off a 10 play drive for the Yellow Jackets. They go 80 yards in three minutes and 43 seconds to score to make it 14 to nothing. And now the Tigers, second and 10 at the 20. Up the middle it goes. Henry Carter, number 40, at fullback, and Ralph Malone makes the tackle. Malone is the speediest of the Georgia Tech linebackers. He's tall and rangy. Was an outside linebacker before they shifted him this year. There you get a shot of Henry Carter from Gastonia, North Carolina. He's a freshman, 6'3", 215. And with 6.35 left in the first half, I think that you're not going to see Clemson panic here. They're going to stay with their game plan, stay with the things that work for them. Griffin is in a tailback now, along with Carter, the fullback. Epley holds on. Oh, a bad cross by Epley. Fumble on the play. And I think the Tigers got it back close to the first down six. Well, Epley had a rough time last week with four fumbles. Kate. Here you're going to see him tuck it underneath. He wants to cut it up and then second guesses himself and lets it go as he's being hit way out of position that time. And Clemson's lucky to get the ball back. KD Dunn fell on that ball for Clemson. So it was good enough for a first down at the 30-yard line. First and 10 at the 30 with 6.09 remaining second quarter. And not, excuse me, not the way coaches like to see first downs made. That plate. Goes to Griffin with a one bouncer. We mentioned that number 99 was good pass rusher, Pat Swilling. He was the guy that was putting the pressure on in that little swing. 
Epley now five out of seven for 47 yards through the air. Griffin, the tailback, number 44 in your picture. We've got Pat Charleston and Ray Williams coming to the near side. Williams is in the slot. Second and 10 from the 30. Epley on the roll. And it's Kyle Ambrose with the sack from East Orange, New Jersey. A sophomore, 6'3", 248 pounds. We're going to see something happen here that doesn't often happen to Mike Epley. He's got exceptional quickness. But Kyle Ambrose catches him from behind. And had Ambrose not caught Epley, he had a great deal of running room down that right sideline. His sixth tackle of the year. His second sack, Kyle Ambrose, who plays behind Glenn Spencer. Spencer with a terrific first quarter. On the third and 15, will challenge that mark for Clemson on the third down conversion total. He's got his man open. Boyer, Sheldon Boyer for the first down. And Epley took a hard hit. That time, Donnie Chisholm, number 57, came in. Well, this is a clutch throw. You see Tech back in his own defense. And Boyer went down, sort of fake to the post, cut it back out to the outside. Rutland coming up too late. That's a big first down for Clemson on a third and 15. That 23-yard pass now has uh, up Epley's total to 70 yards through the air here in the first half. First and 10 from the 48-yard line for the Tigers. Epley handing off to Griffin. Nice pursuit by Swilling. And Travis coming up from the uh, cornerback position. There was, a, there was a lot of talk prior to this game about Clemson's team speed, the advantage they had. But so far, we've seen a lot of speed out of Georgia Tech. There's great pursuit that time by the Tech defense, not allowing Griffin, who has great speed, to get outside. Griffin playing with a slight injury, though. Second and nine from the 49. Travis! Drops the ball, intended for Ray Williams. Terrific pressure. Mike Travis out of Marietta, Georgia, went to Walton High School. He was a running back. He's quick. 4-5, four, 4-6 four, speed. Well, there's Towns, the strong safety. He actually rushed the passer that time. Did not drop back into coverage. Clemson was effective in keeping him away from Epley, but Epley was lucky he didn't have that one picked off. Third and nine at the 49. Boyer and Charleston, the receivers. It's Boyer to the near side. Epley, great drop. Nice pickup. That one's going to cut up the side. So the Yellow Jackets take over on the turnover. Cleve Pounds, the converted running back, picks it out of the air for his first interception of the year. A Georgia Tech came blitzing it, both middle linebackers up the middle. Epley had to move out of the pocket and he throws the ball right into Cleve Towns' chest. Towns really just sitting back in his own. The Clemson receiver hooked behind him. That's KD Dunn and Epley just never saw him. First and 10 at the 49 for the Yellow Jackets. Cleve Towns. He took to that new position. Beautifully in spring drill. Zuberry. Looks like almost a broken play that time as he gets close to the first down marker. Well, this was the quarterback draw. It was run all the way. Dewberry takes about five steps back, lets the Clemson secondary get into their coverage. That time, Keith Blanton, the fullback, threw a great block for him up the middle. Dewberry now with a second and one from the 42 of Clemson. Robert Lovett. Lovett stacked up pretty well. It's Michael Perry, number 99, getting the first shoulder to it. First down, though, for the Yellow Jackets. As Lovett takes the ball to the 40-yard line. Number 91, 6'2", 275 pounds. The redshirt freshman, Michael Perry. Michael had a great first game against Appalachian State. Three minutes and six seconds you see there before halftime. From the 40, a first and ten for the Yellow Jackets. Dewberry. Going for wide. 
to be out of bounds, I believe. He caught it out of bounds. The interception by Ronald Watson disallowed. And so that'll give Tech the second and ten. Well, Dewberry put this ball in a good spot because Ronald Watson was back there with Danforth. Both safeties were deep back in the zone. Really no one open, and uh, Dewberry did the right thing by throwing the ball out of bounds. Here you see the Georgia Tech offensive line doubling up Dewberry the time he used. Doubling up once again, Capano and Davis on William Perry. Second and ten. Dewberry's got his tight end open. Wilkins at the 30. Almost to the 25-yard line before Kenny Danforth puts the hit on him. Henry Walls with good pressure. But well, it does not prevent the Yellow Jackets from getting a first down here, Kim. It's a play-action pass to Robert Levette. Dewberry keeps rolling out. Just a little dump to Wilkins' tight end. you love to see that kind of play. Short possession type passes. They've got a first and ten. At the 26-yard line. Tech moving the ball now through the air. And off the Levette. Penalty flag down. Levette makes it to the 20, 21-yard line before Tyrone Davis pushes him out of bounds at that point. Tyrone is from Athens, Georgia. A two-year letterman, a senior. Gets to Levette. Let's check out the penalty flag. Well, Levette had at least five yards on the play. It was thrown in an area of holding. That's what it is. It's going to be offensive holding on Georgia Tech. But what execution Tech is showing on the offensive side of the football field. Dewberry has really played a great game so far, Art. Dewberry is, we've seen so much improvement in this quarterback in a year's time. As we mentioned earlier in the telecast, he took over when Stu Rogers got a knee injury, put him out for the season, in fact, at the Clemson game up at Death Valley. And he came in and he said, I did not have a clue as to what I was doing. I was just running around out there. Well, he ran pretty well in that game. But... Uh, the knock was his passing ability. And over the offseason, he threw literally two to 300 balls five times a week to try to develop that passing arm. And that's exactly what it takes. They'll throw two or 300 times a day, five days a week. And uh, you've got to have a young arm to do that. That's why I'm sitting here now, because my about ready to fall off. Well, this team believes in uh, Dewberry as well, and that really counts. First down and 20 from the 36 for the Yellow Jackets. The I formation, Glant from the fullback, Lovette the running back, the tailback. It's Lovette. Here's out. Oh, he took the tackle off and gets it to the 30-yard line. Walls finally making the tackle. Danforth, I, I thought for sure, had it. It was after Meadows slowed him down. Well, you're going to see great individual effort here by Robert Levette. Breaks one tackle there. Look at the balance. Look at that move. Comes up. He's going to break another tackle. The Clemson pursuit is there, but Levette really makes things happen. Second down and 14 now from the 30-yard line. Levette, 27 yards. There's Blanton, the fullback, the lone remaining running back now. Levette will be out on the passing lane. Blanton, the fullback. Nice coverage, but he gets around Milton and moves inside the 25 to the 22-yard line. Henry Walls, the other linebacker, gets credit for the tackle. You know, that graphic we just saw, Robert Levette, 11 carries for 27 yards, really doesn't illustrate the effectiveness he's had in this game. Not only is he running the ball well, he's got a couple of passes for big gainers, but when he's in that backfield, that Clemson defense is pursuing him, and it's opened up other things for the Tech offense. Dewberry has thrown for 159 yards here in the first half with one minute still remaining. On the roll. He's got an opening. That's the fullback once again, Glanton, who is just smothered on the hit by Tyrone Davis. 56 seconds remaining. Glanton came off under his own power. Tyrone Davis as well. They had their bell rung a little bit. That was Thomas who was blocking for Dewberry. He built himself up from 230 to 251 for this season at left guard. And he's done a nice job in this game so far. Lovett. Lovett inside the five. Down to the four. Clock continues to tick with 48 seconds remaining. And that, play was, that play was over John Thomas that time. A nice opening on that left side. The clock's running. Thomas from the Ivermeyer. Lamp from the fullback. Fumble. 
Was he in, though, before the fumble? He, if he crossed the goal line, it's a touchdown, regardless. And that's what the officials now are signifying, is there's also a yellow flag down on the turf. Well, the Clemson offense has run out on the field. That time, the left guard, John Thomas, trapped. You're going to see John so old. And he did drop that ball before he was in the end zone, Art. John Thomas, the left guard of Georgia Tech, came, came down and trapped the left side of Clemson's defensive line. Here's the call. We'll see if we can pick it up. The penalty against Clemson, evidently. I'm sorry, we couldn't hear it. What a break for Georgia Tech. Clemson's offense has run out on the field. They're going to have to bring the defense back. Lanton, anxious to get into the end zone, left the football behind after a good hit. Clemson had recovered. Danny Ford wants to know what's the call. Anthony Johnson made that hit. Now they're marking it off. Half the distance, of course. A substitution infraction against Clemson. Another costly penalty. The second costly penalty in this ball game. Georgia Tech leading it 14 to nothing with 29 seconds on the clock. They have a second down and a little more than a yard to go for the touchdown. Three tight ends in the ball game. Dewberry. The pass to Wilson. Touchdown. What a play call. The third time that a tight end has gone into the end zone for points. Well, it seems like every time Dewberry takes a gamble, he gambles right. He's coming out here trying to make it look like run all the way, but he's got Gary Wilkins behind the secondary in the back of the end zone. And Georgia Tech's got a 20 to nothing lead, ready to make it 21. We'll check out that touchdown pass once again after the extra point try. Bell coming in. He's 7 out of 7. Makes it 8 out of 8 on the season. And so with 20 seconds remaining here in the second quarter, it's Georgia Tech 21, Clemson nothing. There's the cast you see on the arm. That's a broken right hand. Well, what Dewberry does so well here, Art, he makes it look like run all the way. He's got the ball tucked under his arm. Clemson's thinking run, but look at Wilkins. Sneaking through everybody to the back of the end zone. Dewberry puts the ball right on him. It's Georgia Tech 21, Clemson nothing. Perfect touch on the pass as well, Kim McClurkin, as the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets try to tell the country that they have arrived with their football program under Coach Bill Curry. Dewberry was just a fantastic day, Kim McQuilkin. Well, 14 out of, excuse me, 10 out of 14 for 175 yards against the top-rated passing defense in the country is not a bad day at all. Romanis set the kick off for the uh, Yellow Jackets. He's been putting it on the ground lately. This time he locks it up. Rulak and Williams greeting each other at the five. It's Rulak with the football. He's got some speed if he can break loose. He's down at the 30-yard line. So the Tigers will take over with 13 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. The Yellow Jackets, another great drive in 51 yards, nine plays for their last score. Let's take a look now at this run back. It was a cooperative effort on the catch, and Rulak makes the most of it. Well, Terrence Rulak showing a lot of desire. Here, look at the good blocking downfield. But I don't think he's got Clemson in a position where they can go into a score with only 13 seconds left of ball on their 30-yard line. Let's see what Epley can do. They hand it off to Griffin. And Griffin goes to the 35-yard line. It's regroup time for the Clemson Tigers here at halftime as they're letting the clock run out. And the fans in this Georgia Tech resurgence in Atlanta, Georgia, stand on their feet to cheer the Yellow Jackets. There's some 16,000 Clemson fans here that are rather quiet at halftime with the score. Georgia Tech 21, Clemson nothing. We'll be back with more here at halftime in just a moment. 
Art Ekman along with Kim McClurkin here at halftime at Grant Field in Atlanta, Georgia, where Georgia Tech leads Clemson 21 to nothing. You can say a lot about psychological factor in Clemson's loss to Georgia last week, but when it comes to kickoff and after, it's execution, Kim McClurkin. Well, we've really got to credit Bill Curry because he's come in here with a flawless game plan. It's one thing to call a great game, but then to have it executed out on the field is another thing. And his quarterback, John Dewberry, has been doing a great job of executing the game plan. It was interesting to see that they keyed on Robert Lovett and the fullback Clemson came through. Well, that was part of the game plan, I'm sure. He knew that Clemson defense, that swarming defense, would be keying on Lovett. And he's mixed it up with Dewberry on the bootleg and planting up the middle, and it's worked very effectively for them. As we take a look at some of the highlights of the first half of action, we will see the fullback get his touchdown, and deservingly so. After many long runs, Glanton has the honor of taking it into the end zone. Well, the offensive line of Georgia Tech, that big offensive line, has had great surge all afternoon. Here we see Dewberry on the bootleg. I believe this is a two-point conversion to Wisenhunt. The rollout brought the secondary up, and Wisenhunt was able to sneak behind everybody for the two points. Here we see a converted running back, Cleve Pounds, make an interception and keying the, uh, the Yellow Jacket defense that's been very sharp. Well, all he did that time was stay in his own, stay at home, performing his job, and Epley didn't see him. They got the turnover. Dewberry, who's had a great day at quarterback. Here's the rollout again. It seems like every time we turn around, Dewberry's on a rollout, either running or passing. That time he hit his tight end for the touchdown. Wilkins, the touchdown reception. And here at halftime, a look at the stats. As uh, they will be very, very surprising in many ways, look at Georgia Tech's total. 297 yards here at halftime to 136 for Clemson. And 165 of those through the air. Clemson has had two turnovers. And the penalty situation pretty even. Time of possession pretty even. But the execution of Georgia Tech in that big yardage factor has led them to a 21 to nothing lead here at halftime. We'll be back with the second half kickoff with the Clemson Tigers versus Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets right after this. Rabbits is ready to kick off for the second half of action. 21 to nothing, Georgia Tech leading. It's Rulak and Williams waiting on his own goal line, on their own goal line for the kick. Nick Romana, a senior out of Atlanta, Georgia, handles the kickoff chores for the Yellow Jackets. A low line driver to Williams from the two-yard line. 15, 20, 25, and he collapses there. First and 10 Tigers from about the 26-yard line. Coming in to make the tackle for Georgia Tech was Sammy Little once again. That's the second time that Lilly has covered the kickoff with a tackle. And I'm sure at halftime, Danny Ford, not wanting to panic, wants to come out this second half and just get something started. I'm sure that they won't go to any sort of a drastic passing attack. They'll use their option. They'll mix in their passes. They just need to get that first score and get that Clemson get those Clemson players settled down. From the 26-yard line, that play rolls out. Look at that athletic ability just to stay alive. Credit the sack to Ken Piker. He's from Titusville, Florida, 6'5", 240-pound junior. Rulak to the far side, Williams to the near side. It's Flowers and Driver the running back. Epley to Williams. Complete at the 35. Running laterally most of the way, gets to the 38-yard line, and Mike Sabbath makes the tackle from the cornerback spot. Well, Clemson uses the option so effectively that they like to throw a lot of their passes off the option. This was set up to make it look like run, and then Epley pulls up and hits Williams on the quick post, and look at his elusiveness. You saw number 31 hit the deck in the lower part of your screen. That's Anthony Harrison. He is also down on the field now. He won the job in the spring with Mark Reeves, and he's a sure tackler at that free safety spot, but he's injured at this moment. Ingram comes in for Harrison, who goes off under his own power. 21 to nothing, Tech. Tigers trying to come back into the ball game. The hand off to Flowers, and Flowers working hard for every yard he got. Moves over the 40-yard line of about the 43 before Glenn Spencer and Jim Anderson combined for the stop. 
You know, it's a very important streak that means an awful lot to Clemson at stake right here. They've won their last 20 games in a row against ACC opponents. One more win would tie the all-time mark held by Maryland. But right now, they're 21 points down. The fullback, once again, barely to the 45-yard line. Glenn Spencer, number 94, pounces on Flowers. Well, here we see Swilly, the linebacker for Georgia Tech. He's going to force this play to the inside in good position and the entire Tech defense that time in good position. Third and four, this is a big play for Clemson to open up the second half. Clemson has been able to get first down six out of seven times. Epley on the option to Stacy Driver. He's got a good block. Driver first down and inside the 48-yard line. Reginald Rutland. Finally makes the tackle. Kenny Flowers with a fine block out of the fullback spot. Well, Epley really makes this play happen by the quick decision that he makes. He sees right away that he's got the outside. No sense to hold on to the ball, give it to Driver, let him do what he does best. Stacy knows where those first down chains are, and he's up the field for the first down. A key moment for the Clemson Ball Club for the first and ten at the 46-yard line. Epley looking for Williams. He's got it at the 40. Fumble on the play. Out of bounds. A good break. Richard Ricardo Ingram made the stop. He's one of the most improved freshmen on this club. Well, this big hit by Ingram is going to negate any yardage gain. The fumble bringing the ball back. Georgia Tech blitz this time. Here's Epley just getting the ball off. A blow to his head. Good, helmet good catch, but look at this hit. And the five yards they had gained are lost by the fumble. Ricardo, a freshman from uh, Douglas, Georgia. Also a baseball player on Jim Morris' ball club. Second and nine now. He's got Williams in the open, but he dumps it off this time to his fullback. Flowers. Flowers. First down. Out of bounds at the 37-yard uh, line, it looks like, where Ingram met him there. Epley is down. He got smashed hard after letting go of the pass. Well, Epley did a nice job of finding the secondary receiver. He wanted to go to KD Dunn down the middle. Look at the hit there, right in his back. Good clean hit, though. But how about Flowers? Watch the speed he shows for a fullback getting outside here on Mike Travis, the cornerback for Georgia Tech, and that's a big play by Flowers. First and 10 from the 36-yard line for the Clemson Tigers. Dunn is in the slot to the near side. Flowers up the middle. Has a nice break off that line of scrimmage to the 31-yard line. Ralph Ballone hits him there, the inside linebacker from Madison, Alabama. He's a 235-pound junior. Flowers coming out of the ball game. Georgia Tech blitzing again on that play. Henry Carter replaces him, number 40. Henry from Gastonia, North Carolina. Looks like they were starting to look at Flowers' knee on the sideline, Art. Second and five. That's Driver. Big hole! Stacy Driver cutting to the outside. Can't get the block he needs from uh, K.D. Dunn. He's dragged down by Cleese Pound. So Driver gets another first down on the second and five. Well, there's a big initial hole here made by the left side of the Clemson offensive line. Look at it. There's Andy Cheatham. Driver turning on the Jets and see how he protects that ball. Stacy Driver. 54 yards in this ball game. First and 10 for the Tigers at the 25. Epley. Got his man. Look up. Touchdown. Richard Butler. And Clemson decides to make a game of this one. So Clemson has come out the second half on fire. You're going to see Mike Epley fake the option. Here it is. Looks like option all the way, but he's going to pull up. He hits Butler on the quick post. A fine individual effort here. Breaks the tackle. Keeps his balance into the end zone. That was Anthony Harrison trying to come up and make a tackle. And Clemson's back in this football game. The two-year veteran, the senior from where Joe, South Carolina, his first touchdown reception of the year. Igwe Buike puts it up and through the upright. Clemson is on the board here in the third quarter. With 11 minutes and 6 seconds remaining in the third quarter, the score, Georgia Tech 21, Clemson 7. We'll pause now for a word from your local station.
but some 16,000 Clemson fans who have driven to Georgia have something to cheer about now. With 11.06 remaining here in the third quarter, their club is on the scoreboard. 21-7 Georgia Tech, Igboy Buike right there. Better known as Donald, prepares to kick off. 13 of 18, unreturnable, but this one is returnable. And it's Gary Lee. He doesn't make it to the 20-yard line. Good coverage that time. Tyrone Davis, the first to make a hit. And Perry Williams. And so in three minutes, 54 seconds, Clemson goes 74 yards. Capped off by the 24-5-yard touchdown reception by Butler. And I'd be interested to know what Danny Ford said to his crew at halftime because... Epley, Flowers, Butler, Driver, they all came out fired up to start the second half. From the 19-yard line, Georgia Tech has the first and ten. Dewberry hands to Levette. Steve Berlin comes through to make the stop behind the line of scrimmage. He ties up Levette at the 16-yard line. There's a player that we did not hear much from in the first half for Clemson. They're fine defensive tackle, Steve Berlin. He starts off the second half with a big play. Lovett has been held to only 29 yards in this game so far. Second down and 12 for the Yellow Jackets at the 17. Out of the pro set. Harrington is under shot by Dewberry. Mike Harrington out of that flanker spot. They, they feel if they can get the ball to Harrington, he can do an awful lot with it because they consider him the best runner after the pass reception that they have on the pass receiving core. But Dewberry just couldn't get him the ball. Georgia Tech converting three out of four third down tries. Now has a third and 12. A rather difficult situation from their own 17-yard line. Lee in motion. Quarterback draw. Dewberry got by a tackler, but he did, can't get the first down. Rolled out of bounds at the 28, Mikey Williams. Nice defensive job that in time and containment. And I believe this is the quarterback draw all the way. They double team Berlin at the line of scrimmage. That gives Dewberry some running room. But here comes the rest of the Clemson defense, 55 Henry Walls. And he's not going to have enough for the first down. First punt of the ball game for Georgia Tech. And it's Mike Snow. Four punts, averaging 40 yards. He's not a big booming kicker, but he has good hang time. Reggie Pleasant goes back. You know, this was also a very important defensive series for Clemson. The first time coming out in the second half, their defense also up to the task, and now the offense is going to get the ball back with a lot of momentum. Mike Snow from Rim of the World, J.C. in Blue Jay, California. And there's Reggie Pleasant, hoping for a good run back. There's only been one punt in this ball game, and that was by a hatcher of Clemson. And now Snow, his first try. Wissinghunt, Wissinghunt is the blocker, standing on his 22-yard line. End over end, not too high. It's runnable. Pleasant, good side step, good opening. Tucks it under 42-yard line. Reggie Pleasant does his job, Kim. Well, he did it in very exciting fashion, too, because after he caught the ball, he cut up field in traffic. He was holding that ball right out in front of him, but he tucked it away at the last minute before the tackle, and Clemson's got good field position. What the score, Georgia Tech 21, Clemson 7. We'll pause now for a word from your local station. Flowers and Driver, the running back, first and 10 from the 43. Stacy Driver, nice through over the 45 to the 46-yard line before Mark Tice makes the tackle. You know, what a difference a half makes, but early in this second half, so far, you can just see the surge in the Clemson offensive line that was lacking in that first half. Rulak to the near side, and Ray Williams, the wide out right. Second and seven from the 46. Stacy, driver. Travis warding off a block by Rulak. Makes a nice play. And it's not a first down for Clemson as they get it to the 49, maybe the 48-yard line. They need it across the 48 for the first down. Stacy driver now in 15 carries, 61 yards for that young man. And what a block Kenny Flowers threw on that play. 
You know, Flowers really developed his blocking technique in a short period of time. He wasn't known as a fine blocking fullback that we see here today. He's done a great job so far. Third down and one at the 49-yard line for the Tigers. 9.36 remaining, third quarter. Driver, first down! Needham and Ellis, the blockers on the play. Well, you're going to see the right tackle here and the right guard, Andy Cheatham and Joe Ellis get just enough third against that Tech defensive line to get the first down. Clemson now in Tech territory. Ellis, the highest rated lineman this year on that offensive front for the Clemson Tigers. First and 10 at the 47-yard line. Clemson with 14 first downs. Trying to catch up with a scoreboard, fumble, loose ball. It looks like Tech has it. We'll wait till the end file, though. They're still moving around in that scrum down there. What a momentum break now for Tech. Well, here's Cleve Towns, the strong safety. Kenny Flowers blocking on him, but look at the strength of Towns. He had the pitch man, Stacy Driver, and Epley just had that ball in a bad position. He didn't have it in at his hip, at his buckle, where it should be on the option. That's and Mark the, Pike. The ball popping three there, Art. Pike, it looks like he's right at loose. And here comes the onslaught. First and 10, Georgia Tech at the 48-yard line. More importantly, though, stopping that drive third Clemson turnover. Tech has not turned the ball over yet in this ball game. Lampton drops the ball. I think he might have gotten back to it though. Let's check it. Michael Perry says Clemson has it. You really can't believe the ball player in a situation like that, can you? Somebody has a foul there. And it's sure to check Yellow Jacket down on the field as well. You know, that, that turnover that Clemson just suffered through, not only does it hurt to give Tech good field position, but that momentum is lost. Kenny Danforth thought he had the football. Down on the field is Tony Campano, the right guard. Well, Dewberry puts the ball in there in good shape. Blanton just can't hang on to it. Tech's awful lucky to get that ball back. I think it looks like that Tech took it back. Campano comes out of the ball game at that right guard spot. He came in second in the ACC discus track and field competition and will be sorely missed as John Porter comes in in his place. Second and nine at the 49. Dewberry. Can't get the blocking now, but look at that. First down, out of bounds. At the 40-yard line, Tyrone Davis adjusting to make sure he goes out of bounds. Well, John Dewberry showing us he's got some speed. This is the quarterback draw all the way. There's Slanton leading him to the left. Dewberry says, whoop, nothing going on here. Let's reverse field, come back to the right side. And he's showing some good speed there and gets enough for the first down. Dewberry now has rushed for 47 yards in five tries, and so it's first and 10 from the 40 for the Yellow Jackets. The 40 of Clemson with 8.38 remaining, third quarter. Wise goes in motion. That's Levesque. Blasts his way through that hole after hitting uh, Henry Wall. Levesque that time showing good strength. Makes his way to the 35-yard line. Well, here is Henry Walls, the inside linebacker on this play. Coming up, warding off Blanton, the fullback, running into Levette, but look at the drive Levette's got, falling forward, second and five. Levette here in the third quarter has only 34 yards, but that's not the whole story, of course. On the second and five from the 35. Out of bounds, Reggie Pleasant covering on Mike Harrington. Well, Reggie Pleasant was back there in his zone, and he was in perfect position. Georgia Tech went with the play-action pass. The Clemson secondary not pulled. Dewberry did a good job throwing this one out of bounds. Dewberry certainly showing a lot of strength on that throw, Kim, if nothing else. Well, he showed even more brains. That's right. 
third and five for the Yellow Jackets. Blanton is full back. Lovett the trail back out of the eye. Lovett cannot make the first down. Right there is Henry Wall. Looks like Walls is doing his assignment, keying on Lovett. So that'll bring David Bell into the picture. His longest, a 46-yard field goal as we check out the last play. Well, here's Lovett out of the eye. Real good play by Henry Walls that time, sending off the blocker, jamming up the middle. This is going to be a 51-yard attempt. He does have the leg for it as Wizenkunt will put the ball down in front of the 41, so it'll be a 50-yarder if he makes it. Will it get over? Right it right. is no good. Off to the right. Clemson gets the football back. The score, Georgia Tech 21, Clemson 7. We'll be back after this. That looks like we'll have a new number one football team. Hard to believe it's Syracuse beat Nebraska. Epley's pass intended for Williams, almost intercepted, diving for the football. It was Dante Jones, the linebacker, number five. Mike Travis putting a good hit on that time, and Epley, I think that was an ill-advised pass. Let's see if we can uh, get another look. Well, not only is Tech hitting in the secondary, but they're also hitting in the backfield. Epley takes a real shot here. Just as he lets the ball go, I'm sure that kind of interference does affect the throw. And the ball was slightly off the mark. Epley sends his wide receivers to the right. Rulak and Williams. Second and ten from the 34. Griffin. Out of the tailback spot. As hard sledding over the 35 to the 36. Ed Roof making the tackle. Dante Jones also helping out. Griffin now in three carries has 11 yards. And will make it third and eight from the 34. Sheldon Boyer to the near side. Rulak goes to the far side. Tech almost in a prevent. As Epley releases it to Carter, the fullback. And a big hit at the 40-yard line. Pat pulling along with Dante Jones. Well, this is the kind of play that's really not going to get you your first down when you've got a third and eight. Epley, I think, wanted to go down the middle of the field to his tight end, Dunn. He was forced to go to his safety valve. Carter behind the line of scrimmage, and you just can't make up that kind of yardage when you complete the pass behind the line of scrimmage. Hatcher's second punt, his first one for 50 yards, went into the end zone. He's got plenty of room this time. Oh, beautiful hang time. Daryl Norton at the 15. The smallest yellow jacket leans forward to the 17, where the Jackets will take it over first and 10. What a great punt by that young man, Dale Hatcher. 10th in the nation in punting average. Well, and not only that, but Hatcher's hang time, I think, is as good as anybody's in the country. He really gets that ball up in the air. Now's the time that Danny Ford on that bench would like to see the defense try that ball loose. Force the Yellow Jackets into a turnover from their own 17. Dewberry off to Lovett. Lovett, a gain of three yards after Keith Williams makes the hit. Well, you know, even though they get three yards on this play, this is a good call by Tech because what it does is keeps that Clemson defense loose. Throwing a drop back pass on first down is a little bit out of character for Tech. The kind of thing that'll keep the defense off balance and there's nothing wrong with three or four positive yards on first down. Pearson and Norton are on the near sideline as wide out, second and six at the 21. Pearson in motion, flip back goes to Lovett. Lovett, nice play that time by Richard Donaldson. As Blanton just couldn't take care of both the uh, Clemson Tigers. Blanton, the fullback, was blocking on the play and chose to go to the outside man. Lovett now 16 carries, 38 yards. It is a third and four for Tech. Tech 21 to 7 over Clemson. Steve Berlin walking off under his own power, limping holding on to his left knee before he started off the field. Berlin coming into the game with 23 tackles in three games of valuable assets on that defensive front. Robert Lovett sets up as Tech has a third and four at the 23. 
Four minutes, 29 seconds remaining, third quarter. Dewberry. He's got his tight end, but he wants to run this one. First down. And out of bounds. Goes out of bounds at the 31 yard line. And Tech seems to come up with a big play when they need it this afternoon, and Dewberry's been making most of those big plays. Not only is Mike Harrington the flanker for the Yellow Jackets limping off the field with some assistance, but also number 65, John Davis, the 292-pound sophomore, is on the bench on the left side, and he has come off the field. Number 50, Andy Hearn, has replaced him at the center spot. He's improved his size. He was in the running for the starting spot at the center before they moved Davis from tackle. There you see Davis is surrounded by his teammates. Andy Hearn from Charlotte, North Carolina, now the center for the Yellow Jacket. First and 10 at the 31-yard line. Lampton. The fullback gets a gain of four. And Richard Donaldson comes up to make the play. They're, they're counting on that senior from Fayetteville, North Carolina, a lot today. Well, here you see Andy Hearn come into the ball game and in the first play makes a great block on William Perry. Got Clinton some running room up the middle. Blanton with 78 yards in 10 carries. Second down and six at the 35. 334 remaining. Davis back of the ball game at center. Levette has no running room. Nice tackle that time by Tyrone Davis. Tyrone getting some help from Watson. Well, with 315 left in the third quarter, the clock running. Clemson's going to be around at the end of this game. I'm sure they'd like to get on the board with some sort of a score still in the third quarter. Third and four at the 37. John Dewberry of Roswell, Georgia, for quarterback. Looks for the pass. Wizenhut can't hold out of the football at the 45. Nice move by Ken Brown defensively. Made it very difficult to complete that pass. Well, Clemson obviously talked about this play at halftime. There you see some of the linebackers go with the flow, but they had two people over here stay at home. Good defense that time by Clemson. It forced, it forced Dewberry to throw behind Jeff Wells, the receiver. Reggie Pleasant standing back on his 21 as Snow prepares to punt. His first punt of the game not long ago with a 42-yarder with not much hang time. This one is a little flat, but the fair catch is called for by Pleasant at the 21-yard line, and now he's not too pleasant about it. With the score, Georgia Tech 21, Clemson 7. We'll pause now for a word from your local station. This is the Raycom Sports Network. Third quarter action, 2.42 remaining. Let's see if the Tigers can put themselves on the scoreboard once again. Flowers up the middle. Well, Danny Ford has to be scratching his head right now because uh, the Tigers came out of that locker room fired up. They drove the length of the field. Flowers now with 30 yards and eight carries. They put themselves on the scoreboard. Only trail by 14 now with 2.19 remaining third quarter, but things are stalling down. Clemson with a second and eight from their 24-yard line. Epley on the roll. Good coverage in the secondary. Now the man is open, and it's... Boyer, Sheldon Boyer. First down, big yardage play out to the 42-yard line. Epley was able to run long enough so that Boyer could get rid of Mike Travis, who made the tackle. Well, he gets a good block by Flowers right there in the backfield. Mike's able to stay alive. There he, he's even motioning to uh, Boyer, move your left a little bit. That's where the opening is. And they've got a nice completion downfield. Sophomore learning how to get into the team. First and 10 at the 42. Clemson, the screen pass to Griffin. Griffin, nice cut, gets to midfield to the 49-yard line. It'll be a second down and about two yards to go for the first down. Ken Parker from the defensive end spot making the tackle. Reginald Rutland also helping out from the cornerback as Griffin making a nice run after the catch. And he has Steve Reese, his left guard out there in front of him. Carlton and Rulak, the wide out to the right side. Flowers and Griffin, the running back. That's Griffin. The 
does not get the first down, Ivory Lee makes the tackle, number 56, from Statesboro, Georgia. Well, here you see Joe Ellis, the right tackle for Clemson, blocking on number 84, Ken Parker. Parker does a good job of getting a stalemate with Ellis. That clogs up the hole, and Clemson's faced with a third down here. Stacy Driver now comes in at tailback, interchangeable tailback. Clemson trying to key up on that rushing yardage with 230 yards so far in the game. Has a third and two, and Stacy Driver gets the call. Looks like he made it as he gets it over the 48-yard line. Ted Roof, Jim Anderson, you call the shot on that one who made the tackle. They both had a hand in it. Out of the eye, Stacy Driver. Look at that second effort over the top of the pile. I think that's what got him the first down. Stacy working hard for 66 yards in this ball game on a first and 10 now from the 47. 14 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Georgia Tech by 14 points. Driver with good blocking in front of him. Makes the most of it to the 40-yard line. I'll tell you, there's some speed on that defense because they reacted well to the hole. Ralph Balloon gets the tackle from his inside linebacker spot, and that's the end of the third quarter with a score. Georgia Tech 41, Clemson 7. We'll pause now for a word from your local station. Georgia Tech head coach Bill Curry shifting his feet now as he looks at the action. His yellow jackets really haven't had an opportunity to move the ball offensively, Jim. Well, he's a little nervous now. He had this team very well prepared for this game. He knows right now that the momentum is with Clemson, and he'd like to do something to turn that around. Robert Lovett, who was averaging 143 yards of ball game, has been shut down. Stacy Driver, first down for Clemson inside the 35 to the 32. Dante Jones tripped him up on the play. Kim Clemson with 105 yards here in the second half as we're in the early moments of the fourth quarter. And Georgia Tech, who dominated the first half, with only 48. Well, the story there is that Georgia Tech offense has spent most of this game, most of this second half on the sideline. Epley to Driver. Driver, good guidance to the 20-yard line. And another first down. Anthony Harrison making the tackle. Let's look at the blocking on this. Terrific. Oh, and you know, Mike Epley, he's had his problems today with a few fumbles, but he keeps coming back at you. There was a dangerous pitch. He let it go at the last second, but he put it right in Driver's hands, and Stacey's got that quickness up the field. That's another first down. Driver with 95 yards, trying to best his 1983 mark, his high mark of 124. Griffin now on the carry. Look out. Griffin defeats the touchdown. And Griffin is back in this ball game. Well, no sooner do we start talking about momentum, and it seems like that Clemson team speed has taken effect. Griffin making it look easy. He's out of the eye. He wants to go over left tackle. He cuts back two or three yards downfield. Nobody touches him. Look Ray at the speed by this sophomore. Ray Williams with a nice downfield block. Igor Buitre setting up now for the extra point. 14-12 remaining in the ball game. Clemson has come to life. Peretti will be holding for Igboy Buike. It's up, and it's good. We've got ourselves a ball game here at Grant Field in Atlanta. Another look at that touchdown run. This is great instinct by Griffin. Just a big hole, but he feels if he gets outside, he's got the touchdown. He even pushes the ball to the outside arm, which is what you'd expect out of a senior, not a sophomore. That's a big play for Clemson, 21-14, to 14, this game is anybody. We'll be back with more action in just a moment. Igwe Buike setting to kick off, and it's Gary Lee on his own goal line, number 33. 21-14. And a booming kick by Donald. It bounced in the end zone before it went out of bounds. Well, I think Gary Lee was trying to bluff the official into thinking that he couldn't catch the ball. If that was the case, the ball would come out to the 30, but the official was on the spot, saw it hit just about a foot inside that end line, so they're bringing it out to the 20. 
78 yards in 10 plays. Griffin, the 21, uh, the 20 yard run for the Clemson score. Now the Yellow Jackets trying to go up against Tommy Harper's defensive line. Les Heron, that assistant coach that does the linebacker chores, and Don Denning, the deep secondary coach. Let's we'll see what they have in mind defensively for John Dewberry, the quarterback. Out of bounds, intended for Isom. Bug Isom of Augusta, Georgia. Reggie Pleasant had good positioning on it. He did. You've got to admire the call by Tech. They're not really a pro drop-back type passing team, but this is what they try and attempt to do here to keep Clemson off balance. This ball is very close to being caught inbounds, but the official was on the spot, ruled it out. Second and ten. 57,704 fans here at Grant Field. Second and ten from the 20. That's first in motion. The fake to Lovett up the middle. Dewberry lost it for a wizen hunt and just a little bit too far. He had Lovett all in the open over the middle as well. So Dewberry now is just a little bit off target. After a terrific first half where Dewberry hit 8 of 12 for 165 yards in the first half. Well, and now he's 9 of 18, so he hasn't had too much success in this second half. He's got 169 total yards passing. There's a big stat there. Both teams doing very well on third down. And this is an important one. The third and tens are the real hard ones, Art. Might be third and 15. I thought I saw John Ivemeyer pull up. I think, I think you're absolutely right. Look at the Terry brothers. Well, they're down in the horseshoe where all the Clemson fans are. They respond. Yep. It was John Thomas, number 72. Same side of the line. Well, third and 15, back on your own 15-yard line. Bill Curry doesn't want to turn over here, but he hates to give up the ball. Let's see what Tech calls. And his punter has not really been booming it out of there. Lovett goes wide. They hand off to Easley. Chuck Easley, a fullback. And he only gains about two yards on the play. So the punting team comes in for Georgia Tech as Henry Walls makes the tackle. It, this game has been like two different games. Yeah, I was thinking just exactly the same thing at that moment. Snow comes into punt. He's averaged 42 yards on his previous two kicks. Reggie Pleasant is on his 42-yard line. 13-26 still remaining in this game. We got all kinds of time, 21 to 14, Tech leading by seven. Low kick. And Pleasant, though, has to let it roll and it goes out of bounds to the advantage of the Yellow Jacket. Clemson with good field position, though, takes over the football at the 36-yard line. Well, the Tech fans are trying to get their team fired up. The defense that we mentioned earlier was ranked number one against scoring in the nation. Don Lindsay in charge of that defense and his assistant coaching staff of John Guy, Larry New, Keith Colson, and Rick Smith. 13 12 remaining in the ballgame. The tailback safety driver goes to the 45 yard line and almost another first down. We'll see where they spot the ball. Kevin Henderson makes the tackle. What? Well, the driver last, was really churning. The last three drives that Clemson's had the ball, you get the feeling that Stacy Driver is almost going to go all the way every time he gets his hands on the ball. Stacy gets shot, such a quick start. He's not the quickest back in the open field that Clemson has, but he sure hits that hole quick. Well, his first two or, two or three steps are as quick as anybody. He's come up just a bit short. They've got a second and one. This is a waste down here. Weigler comes in at tailback. Here's how the scoring went. Bell with field goals. Blanton. It was 14 to nothing. Then Wilkins. Butler and Griffin. Stacy Driver and Flowers at fullback. Driver from the tailback spot. Oh, what a nice spinning move into Tech territory. He goes to the 45-yard line. First down with 20 to spare. Kyle well, Ambrose made the tackle. 
me, Art. Stacy Driver is just, he's just not going to be denied. He's hit right here at the line of scrimmage by number 90, Kyle Ambrose. But Driver says, no way, I'm going downfield. Spins and picks up a first down. At the 45-yard line. The Tigers on the march to try to tie this game. Stacy Driver that time could not cut to his right quick enough for number 45, Kevin Henderson. Henderson out of Los Angeles, California. He's a 6 2 junior, a JC transfer, with lots of physical skills. They just felt that he was lacking a lot of experience, but he's certainly getting it now. He's playing in the uh, spot that Ted Roof normally plays in the inside linebacker spot. Butler goes to the far side, and it's Ray Williams. That's five pass receivers to the near side on a second and seven. Epley goes to Williams. Williams bobbling the ball, had it for a moment. Well, Ray is so good, I don't regret complimenting the man because he's been so terrific this year. Well, here's the play they've used so effectively throughout this ball game. They're faking the option. Epley's on the run, puts the ball right in Williams' hands, and he's just not able to find the handle, and he had plenty of running room in front of him. Big third down. Georgia Tech now. Clemson is coming up on them in total yardage. For the third and seven, Epley. He's got the first down if you're running. Epley out of bounds after passing the stick. And that's the Mike Epley that Clemson's used to seeing. Anderson and Harrison combined for the tackle on Epley. This is a rollout. He's got Flowers and Driver blocking out in front of him. He's got the option to throw the ball if he wants. Finally decides to tuck it underneath, and he's downfield fighting for the first down. Gets the first down there inside the 35-yard line. Clemson with a methodical drive here in the second half. First and 10 at the 32. Driver. Oh, he's got plate running room in a block. And he clips on that artificial turf and goes down. It was Rulak that had the block on the corner. Well, you could almost guess that Clemson was going to come back to Driver out of the eye. Andy Cheatham, the right guard, number 61, makes a great block at the line of scrimmage, which brings Driver outside. And thinks he's almost got too many moves for himself on this play, Art. Driver goes out of the ball game after that very fine run. He has 135 yards, his best day ever for Clemson. Andy Cheatham that time, the right guard, he's 6'4", 250, sealed off the entire right side. And you could have driven a truck through that hole. First and 10 at the 18. Clemson, and that's Griffin, the tailback, slips, but he gets up and goes for another couple yards. Even following the block of Kenny Flowers, Pat Swilling finally made the tackle for the Yellow Jackets. The Clemson Tigers on the move. Well, what's so evident about Clemson in the second half is how their offensive line is firing out. On that particular play, it didn't look like much, but the surge was there, so they're five yards downfield while the tackle's being made. Second and five from the 13. Carter in his fullback. Quick toss. Ray Williams. No, Rulak. Touchdown. Curtis Rulak. Rulak's third touchdown reception of the year. Well, and what a super call by Clemson. You're down here inside the 15. This is where the yardage gets tough. They come right out with a pass. Look at Epley's right on the money. Rulak's going to put his head down and get into the end zone. Dante Jones hitting him as he gets into the end zone, but it's good enough for the touchdown. The sophomore from West Jacksonville, Florida, last year set a freshman record for receptions, five for 48 yards and one touchdown against Peck. You know, that play is so hard to defend, Art, because when you're running the option, that secondary's got to come up and support run, and when they pull up and throw that ball, the receivers usually buy them. Iguaguique to tie the game. He does! And the 10 36 remaining fourth quarter. The Tech 21, Hudson 21. We'll pause now for a word from your local station. At the 50 yard line, Pearson in motion. Lampton, the fullback, and that play doesn't work. William Perry is right there to put the blanket around him. You know, what Georgia Tech is trying to do is they're trying to regain the execution that they had in the first half. They used Levette quite a bit as a decoy. They used him on a couple of slip screens and then went to Clanton up the middle. That's exactly what they tried that time. But William Perry was there to stop it. 
Lovett's on the way to becoming the greatest pass receiver in Tech career history because of that play two plays ago. They like to get his speed to the outside. Now he carries the football. Terrence Maxwell doing a great job. He went one-on-one -on -one with Capano, who's only 255 pounds. And Terrence Mack at 210, a sophomore, was able to out-finesse him and maybe even out-strength him on that play. Lovett with 41 yards on the carry, totally for this ball game, gives the Jackets now a third and nine at the 49-yard line. Big play for the Clemson defense. Newberry. He's cut from behind by Craig Crawford. Well, Newberry had to run with this ball because the, Cle the Clemson secondary did a good job. They're in a zone. There you see them dropping back in the zone. Once a ball, once a receiver enters the zone, they'll pick him up, man to man, but. Dewberry forced to tuck it under and run. So the Tigers have a chance to get that football back. Reggie Pleasant, you see him there, standing on the 10-yard line as Snow prepares to a punt. Mike Snow, averaging 44 yards on the three previous kicks, gets a nice hang time this time. Boy, when they needed it, he really got it down there. And look at where the ball will be. I think they'll mark it at the three-yard line. Well, he got great hang time, but he got that great reverse spin when the ball hit the ground. It just died right there on the three-yard line. Tech's going to have super defensive position to start this series. Rosamelia downing the football for the Yellow Jackets at the three. Look at that. Six points in the first quarter. That's wrong. Yes, I mean, I, I, that's right. But Georgia Tech, 15 in the second quarter, and a complete reversal here in the second half. Clemson tying the game at 21, has the ball now on their own three. They try the uh, tailback, and he gains a yard. Dante Jones. Stacy Driver on the carry. Well, Clemson's got his work cut out for them down here because there's seven minutes left in the game. They'd like to have a long drive, but by the same token, they don't want to get too fancy down here. They certainly don't want to turn the ball over deep in their own territory. Safety driver, 137 yards, his best day as a Tiger. Second and eight, Epley. Did he make the first down? It looked like he had... A nice fake and then went out of bounds about the stick. Mark Hogan pushing him there. Oh, and Danny Ford's got to be holding his breath every time he sees Epley out there flashing that ball around. Here he fakes the toss to his right. He's on the bootleg. He's got no help. He's out there by himself. He's still trying to fake people out there on field. But look at that effort, Art, trying to stay in bounds for the first down. Just hold on to that football, the front and ten are saying. First and 10 at the 14, tied at 21. 6.44 remaining in the ball game. Stacy Driver. Well, that defense is getting tough down there at the 15-yard line. Ivory Lee, who's 263 pounds, gets credit for the first hit. Well, you're going to see Ivory Lee. The nose guard. Coming in on the tackle, just a good job by the entire Tech defensive line that time. He's only a sophomore. Had a knee injury two weeks before the season started, and that's when Donnie Chisholm took over for him, but he's back in there now. Had a great game against the Citadel. Second and ten. Epley on the roll. Gets good pressure. What a play that time by Ken Parker. Parker, 6-5, reached out and tripped Epley up. Well, you're going to see Epley on the play-action pass here, faking the driver. He wants to go to Kenny Flowers here. And look at Parker just reach in. Flowers was open out in the flat. Eckley, luckily he didn't fumble that ball, but it's third and 15 now back in your own 10-yard line. Parker showing his quickness and his height really helped. Third and 14, big play for Clemson. Good coverage. Overthrows Richard Butler. Oh, what a key defensive series for the Tech Yellow Jackets. Number 31, Anthony Harrison coming off the field. 
Well, Epley lets it go on the run. It's going to be high. And there's Anthony Harrison. A little extra shove for measure. Texas gets this ball back in great field position with 5.29 left in the game. Daryl Norton is standing back on his 43-yard line. And Hatcher, who has averaged 47.5 in his two previous months, gets a end-over-end, end, not much floating time. And it rolls out of bounds at the 46-yard line. Not one of his better efforts, but a good one. With the score, George 21, Clemson 21. We'll pause now for a word from your local station. The Yellow Jackets have the ball and 5.19 on the clock. Tied at 21. Chuck Easley at fullback. This one goes to Lebeck. Lebeck finds the opening. And is coming yards shy of the first down as he gets toward the 45-yard line before Kenny Danforth makes the hit. And you know, this call isn't going to be much of a mystery. With five minutes left in a 21-21 ball game, you're going to go to your best ball carrier. It's Robert Levitt for the Yellow Jackets. He had a big hole there over left guard. That's John Thomas. John Ivelmeyer really had a terrific block as well. To get a hole like that, you got to have several blocks. The academic All-American Ivelmeyer really had a nice one-on-one -on -one block. Second and two. Easily with the football. No more for his power running and his blocking. Does not get the first down as he makes it to the 45. And William Perry will get the tackle. William Perry is a big man. He's had a whale of the second half. I don't think I'd like to get hugged by him. <laughs> At the 45, third and one for the Yellow Jackets. Crucial to keep that clock on their side. LaVette. Push down. Makes it to the 40-yard line. Very nice try that time. Coming up from the secondary. Well, here, you and see, Wayne Meadows. here you see Perry on John Davis. That time Davis got the stalemate that you look for in the offensive line when the ball's being run away from you. But that gets just enough for the first down. Time a big factor now, Art. 3.43 left in this game. At the 41 yard line. Easily. He's got the opening. Good power runner. Pulls his way to the 30 to the 29. Jeff Wells and Tyrone Davis combining. There you see Davis working on Perry that time. A good block by Davis. This is the play that has put Peck in the field goal range. Chuck Easley averaging 5.5 yards a carry coming into the ball game has replaced Keith Glenton, who was so successful in the first half. But Easley is only a sophomore from Atlanta's Westminster High School. Assistant head coach, Tom Harper. He's the head of the defense. And his assistants left Herman, Don Denning, Tom West trying to come up right now with a way to stop the Yellow Jackets. Three minutes, six seconds on the clock. Check with two timeouts. Clemson with all three left. And the score is tied 21-21. Lovett. A gain of three, maybe four, before he's met by the linebacker core and Steve Berlin. And about the only thing Tom Harper can tell his defense right now is gang tackle, that second man on the tackle, go for the football, try to tear it loose. There's 2.48, the clock's running. It's Berlin, who obviously is hurting, but gutting this one out along with William and Michael Perry up front. Second and seven from the 25 for Tech. Dewberry hands to Easley. And the big fullback powers his way inside the 15-yard line. Plainly secured by Ronald Watson. Well, this is a play that Tech used so effectively in the first half. It, it abandoned them in the third quarter. They've come back here late in the game. And Ronald Watson comes up to make the tackle late, but they sent Robert Levett that time wide to his left. The Clemson defense pursued Levett and Easley was, had the opening right up the middle. The nine-yard gain from Easley had an injury-riddled career in high school. 
and was out a lot of last year with an injury. From the 14, Lovett. Looking for a three set spot. And the Yellow Jacket fans are going crazy as he makes it to the one-yard line. Tyrone Davis to stop. Well, Robert Lovett has just changed the complexion of this game. Tech had been thinking field goal up until now, but look at this individual effort by Lovett. Look at the cutback at the line of scrimmage. Breaking tackle. Diving for the end zone and Tech thinking touchdown now from the one-yard line. What a sequence third run by Lovett. A first down and one yard to go. 21 to 21 the score. 129 remaining. Easily. Does he make it? The Yellow Jackets are trying to convince the officials, but no sign yet from the man in striper shirt, Henry Wall, with the tackle. Let's check out the replay on that one. Well, there you see Michael and William Perry right in the middle. There's Henry Wall. He meets him right at the goal line. Oh, boy, it looked like that ball was in the end zone. I think they missed their second one uh, now. Not the touchdown, but we're talking about the kick. But hit inside and then went out. Okay, it's second down. Right on the goal line. Penalty flag goes in the air. Well, really not a... Doesn't mean much. Not a bad move by Clemson because it's not going to hurt them. The ball's already on the one-inch line. And what it does is stop the clock. There's only 40 seconds, 47 seconds left there. You see him offside. Not a bad move at all. By not getting into the end zone in that previous play, it cost Clemson about 30 seconds on the clock. Good observation, Jim. 47 seconds. You see it now. This sight. Second down, goal to goal for the Yellow Jackets. Dewberry, shouting out his signal. Easily, penalty flag. The penalty flag was thrown by the same man on the line that put his hands in the air, signaling touchdown. So I think the penalty will be against Clemson. Upside Clemson. Touchdown, Yellow Jackets. Well, one of the biggest touchdowns in recent Georgia Tech football history. Easily right up the middle. Take a look at the line, the way they cut low so that Easily can go over the top. That time behind John. Look at the block by John Davis on Michael Perry. And walking up the back of John Thomas. Oh, that was a great run by Easily because he very easily could have left his feet and not got into the end zone. Georgia Tech taking the lead with 33 seconds on the clock. Bell trying for the extra point. It's up. It is good. Georgia Tech takes the 28-21 lead with 33 seconds on the clock. Well, last week it was Georgia putting it through the uprights with 11 seconds. But the Tigers have more time now. Well, with only 33 seconds left, it is going to be difficult. They have to get the touchdown, not just a field goal. Here it is again. Clemson offside on the play, but easily gets good thrust. But that block by John Davis, the center, was a good one. Last week, with 10 seconds left on the clock, on the kickoff, Clemson tried a flea flicker. Williams caught the ball, ran up the right sideline, threw it back to Rulak, who got all the way down to the 35-yard line of Georgia, and time ran out. We'll have to wait and see if Clemson decides some sort of a trick play here on this kickoff with 33 seconds remaining. Well, I'm sure they saw the film, just not gathered that ball game. It was only up the road in Athens, Georgia. Tech's been trying a number of different types of kickoffs today. They switch, switch kicked it early in the game. Later in the ball game, they tried to hit a few into the end zone. Nick Romanis will see what has been decided now as he comes forward, squibs it, battle for the loose ball, clock still running, 32 seconds, 31 on the clock as it's now stopped, and they'll unpile at the 29-yard line. Well, and a very effective kickoff by Georgia Tech that time. They to make a call before they unwind. I think Clemson retained possession. Tech ball players don't agree with me. The 
They get down toward the bottom and still no official side. It's Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech takes over the football. Well, they tried a good kick, but it was almost like an onside kick. Just getting by the first line of ball carriers, it bounces off of one of the Clemson players. And Tech swarming in there on the ball. And well, it's impossible to tell right now. Who came out of that scrum with the football? It now becomes a mute topic. What would Clemson have done with the football? Because all Tech has to do is fall down. Clemson has three timeouts, right? They're saying John Clare, number 96, came up with a ball for Georgia Tech. 6'4", 226 pound junior from Cincinnati, Ohio. On the first down play at the 29. Dewberry, standing up, standing up, waiting till somebody comes in to touch him. 24 seconds on the clock, 28 to 21, Georgia Tech leading, they have the ball, second down 12, and they'll try to run as much clock off as they can before Clemson obviously calls another timeout. They have a safety valve back in the 43-yard line. That's the ball, number 11. That's Gary Lee, number 33 for Tech, one of the return men, he's actually lining up 15 yards behind the line of scrimmage in case of a fumble. Hard-fought battle here this afternoon at Grant Field. And I think there will be some partying on Peachtree Street tonight. Okay, the play underway. Fourth down, 13. No more timeouts for Clemson. Dewberry just wants to stay in bounds. Well, he went out of bounds. And he didn't want to do that. <laughs> Fourth down, Clemson's going to get one play. And Bill Curry's not too happy with the way that progressed. Clemson's going to have to go almost 70 yards in one play, however, if they're going to win this game. Well, let's put all the receivers out, throw it up, and hope for pass uh, interference or touchdown. Look at the Tech secondary. Their free safety's lined up about 40 yards behind the line of scrimmage. Still seven seconds remaining in this ball game. Epley fires the bomb. Travis waiting for it, intercepted at the 30. He'll run it back. No more time on the clock. This game is different. The horn sounds. And the Tech fans here in Atlanta, like the Chicago Cubs fans in Chicago, have waited a long time to see their program turn around. Final score, Georgia Tech 28, Clemson 21. We'll pause now for a word from your local station. Art Ekman and Kim McLuhan and Kim, it was a, a change of uh, motivation there at halftime, I guess, because after Georgia Tech had dominated the first half, Clemson came back, but it just wasn't quite enough. Well, they did credit Bill Curry because he had a great game plan in the first half. They executed so well. The 21-point lead at halftime was just too much to overcome. Clemson came back like champions to tie this game up late in the ball game, but Georgia Tech was able to put it all together at the end, and it's a great, great victory for Tech. 28 to 21, the final score. Let's take another look at that final touchdown. Chuck Easley got some great blocks up front. Well, John Davis, the center, just makes a terrific block going to his left, blocking down on Michael Perry, the defensive tackle. It was enough for Easley to slide into the end zone, and that's got to be one of the biggest touchdowns in Tech's history. A great victory for the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. They now play North Carolina State right here at Grant Field, while Clemson is called upon to regroup and take on North Carolina, a big rival at Death Valley. Art Ekman and Kim McLaughlin saying thank you so much for being with us. And we'd also like to thank the sports information directors from the two schools, Mike Finn of Georgia Tech and Bob Bradley of Clemson University. The final score, Georgia Tech 28, Clemson 21.